Howdy, 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 my name is Anashi Sasuke, and welcome back to Let's Read Homestuck. In the last episode, uh, Jack Noir is in prison reenacting Jailbreak, but much more violently and with more color. And in this episode, Jake is going to attempt to get a, a gab in edgeways with, uh, what's your face? Aranea, however the hell you say it. Arania. Well, Jake, don't you have anything to say? Um... I think I've spent enough time introducing myself. You've hardly said a word. It would be nice to know whether my long story has confounded you in any particular way, or if you're just being shy. Uh, yes? Jake, I understand this is very much to learn all at once, but do you really want me to keep speaking until I'm blue in the face? <laughs> you appear to be perspiring heavily. There's no reason to be so nervous, especially considering you were only dreaming. Shit. Sorry, I, I don't really know where I put the dream towels. It's okay. Well, at the risk of talking about myself a little more, I feel it will be dishonest not to confess. What? I am a fairly gifted psychic. Whoa, really? Yes! Like, you can see the future? Are they ghost powers or troll powers? Or wait, Chucks, that's a dumb-sounding question. No, it was a fine question. They're troll powers. Sometimes those of my blood type will have them naturally. And no, they're not pre uh, prognosticative abilities. They let me uh, access another's mind in a way that can be terribly invasive if abused. Invasive? Yes, including the ability to control minds when exploited fully. Uh oh. But don't worry, they don't seem to work the same way on your species. They're considerably weaker. The most I can do is get an empathic impression of your emotional state. So, if I speculate that you were shy or nervous, it is because I can sense that you are. Ah, man, you're kidding. So much for trying to be cool, I guess. Although I probably blew that when you saw me yelling at nobody about boners and stuff. I wouldn't say you blew it, but that was certainly odd. Who are you talking to, if you don't mind my asking? That was like... The ghost brain memory splinter of my best friend Dirk who was stuck in my head and you can't see. And he was kind of harassing, uh, hassling me and trying to get me to talk about him, talk to him about his real self, or how his real self has a thing for me, but I kind of think it would be weird to talk to his brain imposter about that, at least for now. And then you showed up and you caught me at an awkward moment where he was threatening to make some bodily functions happen in front of you as a joke, which would have been embarrassing is all blasted heck. But... Now it turns out you can read my mind, too, so I'm surrounded by brain invaders. You seem cool, Aranea, but, uh, when am I going to wake up? I'm not a brain invader, though. I, I said I can only sense your emotions. I think it's a polite to let people know before long. Otherwise, I begin to feel a bit underhanded. Okay, I guess that's not too bad. I think I can keep my feelings buttoned up. That That is... That's what strong and adventurous gentlemen do, I think. They keep a stiff upper lip even on the inside. That way they are never embarrassed and feel slightly more brave about stuff. But you don't have to! That was not the point of my telling you. I'm used to sensing things, uh, many things from people. There aren't any feelings you could have that you could have that will be surprising to me or compromising to you. I really just want you to relax for the brief time we have in this bubble and talk to me. Um, gotcha. But what should we, sh what should I talk about? Well, I've spent almost no time explaining this iteration of your universe. The gods have given me very little access to it through the memories of others until now. I believe they are finally beginning to bridge the divides between long estranged compartments of reality, allowing previously unintroduced parties to mingle. Those from different universes, both their initial iterations and their scratched reboots. Those from different spheres, ones of created potential and of mor uh, mortality. Through us, they all they all attempt to bring closure to unsanctioned loops and restore stability to the cosmos. So I am curious about you and your friends. What is your life like? My life? I wish I could say it was more interesting, but it's actually been a might lackluster. There are monsters, but I try to stay away from them to tell you the truth. It's mostly just me sitting around here watching movies and stuff, and sometimes polishing firearms. Guns are sweet. So are movies. <laughs> this is a terrible story. I understand. The same is mostly true for myself. I can sense that you are either very impressed or in some way intimidated by me, but when it comes down to the basics, a description of my life will be boring as well. Why did you show me around? Show me around my room? Yes, okay. Well, there's some guns. Like I said, guns are great. There is a whole mess of movie posters on the wall. You probably never heard of any of them being a dead alien and such. Nope! And, I don't know, there's a desk which I use to work with silly projects, and that's my bed, I guess, and, uh... Hmm, what else? Dude, just FYI, you've been kind of staring at her. What? Shh! What was that? Nothing? I'm not trying to fuck you up here, I promise, but you gotta watch what you're thinking, remember? Go away! Oh uh, man, no, see? That that thought you just had, that's exactly what I'm talking about. She's a fucking empath, bro! She can pick up on shit like that. Shh, not listening to you. Jake, nothing, it's cool, I'm... You've gotta be kidding, did you seriously just think something that dirty? 
You must be doing this on purpose to spite me now. I mean, just wow, dude. That was X-rated as fuck. No, 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 stop. See, you're talking about it, and now I can't help it. You're psyching me into having dirty thoughts. Get fucking lost, you interloping brain douche. Don't worry, it's gone. It's like a goddamn peep show in here, and I feel like a sleazy piece of shit watching this from a dark corner of your mind. You have a graphic imagination, English. I'm kind of impressed. Shut up, they're just thoughts. It's not like I'm even trying to have them. They don't mean anything. Hmm. Should I leave and come back during another dream? No! Okay, what's this? An illustrated story of some sort? Oh, wait, ho, oh, um... Let's not worry about that. There's nothing really here. Give me that, okay? Why are you getting flustered about this literature? Is it pornographic? It does not strike me as indecent at a glance, though maybe our cultures have different standards? Haha, <laughs> what? No, it's not. It's not that at all. It's just... I don't know, it's just a nerdy comic I read. It's no big deal. There's, there's gotta be other stuff to talk about. Let's, uh, let's see. Jake? Huh? You know, it's not the first time I've said that someone felt a flesh attraction for me. A flesh- What's it? Oh my, oh my flippin' gosh. You really don't have to be so embarrassed. It's perfectly okay. Uh, oh god, oh god, you sense my stupid sexy thoughts. I knew it! God damn you bogus brain strider. Someone just needs to kill me. Or at least wait, make me wake up. This is silly Millie. I don't even- can you, just, can you please just slap me really hard? If not in retribution for my ungentlemanly train of thought, then at least just to get me to wake up and save me from my own ceaselessly, ceaseless buffoonery. Actually, I do believe it would be within the scope of my abilities to get you to wake up, but do you really want me to do that? Uh, maybe? If it is true that you think I'm, a, I'm attractive, then why wouldn't you want to spend a little more time here with me? What's the harm? Are you really in such a hurry to leave and feel sorry for yourself for no explicable reason? Well... No. I already told you, Jake, I'm used to sensing many different types of feelings. It's given me a different perspective on emotions than most have. For most, the feelings of others are often a, myth a mystery, so they're prone to speculation and paranoia about the motivations of people they meet. The emotions of others can seem like such well-guarded mysteries, people begin to believe that's how their own emotions should be treated as well. So when someone can read their thoughts easily, it feels like a violation, but... To one accustomed to reading those thoughts, there isn't the same perception of violation or secrecy. It's more like examining self-evident facts about a person, like t taking note of their appearance. It's still hard for non-psychics to understand this, though, even if you explain it to them. It can lead to some awkward relationships, unfortunately. I imagine it would. So, you've sensed it when other fellows have had the hots for you, eh? Fellows, yes. And ladies, it's happened. Yowza! You must have been popular, I guess. <laughs> no, oh no, no, not really. The fact that I've been f uh, the fleeting object of attraction to a handful really paints the wrong social picture, I'm afraid. That is hard to believe. It's my experience that people very often underestimate their own likability. I sense that feeling all the time, probably because they're in the dark about others' thoughts. They're usually in doubt, so they frequently err on the side of pessimism. In many cases, they would be surprised if they knew how many, many around them were open to friendship or possibly something more. I would venture that if you had such a sense, you might even be surprised yourself. Ha! <laughs> That's a laugh. I'm quite sure my only suitor is my best bro, and even then he is such a jumbled, stupid puzzle of unfathomable ironies, I'm not even sure about that half the time. I wish I had your powers. That would be top-notch. I'd be parked on the corner of Relationship Lane and Easy Street. I could kick back in my eligible bachelor's limousine and never fuck up or ever say anything awkward like I've been doing non-stop so far in the stream. Let's not get carried away. That certainly does not describe my experience. You would think being able to sense the occasional attraction from others would be advantageous and inspire confidence in yourself, and it is nice when that happens, sure, but then you feel the negative emotions directed at you as well. And even if they are less common than the positive ones, you have a way of dwelling on them and magnifying them far beyond their real significance. It's funny how an ability that should give you all the advantages in the world over others can lead you to feel worse about yourself than if you never had them. You put all your energy into thinking about people with the bad feelings about you instead of the good, and you try your best to fix things. But usually it just gets worse. People think you're overbearing and needy, and they don't understand what it is you want from them. I can see why it can drive some, drive some with my abilities to abuse the powers. Fortunately, I was able to resist the temptation. So there are people on your planet who, who do that? On the world I was from, it was rare. Only a few criminals and outcasts would. But in the second iteration I mentioned, it was commonplace. Like I said, things were very different. In my world, though, the higher castes have a lot of responsibilities. It wouldn't be right to abuse my powers. So, you were in a higher caste because of the Hema Spectrum thing you mentioned? Ah, so you were listening to my lengthy preamble. I heard all of it. I was just, um, well, go on. 
Yes, blue bloods like myself were higher than most. The job of each blood cast was to serve the needs of all those below it. We were to use our progressively greater longevity and wisdom to help the lower cast learn and grow, to listen to them and try to provide whatever they were missing, like a hierarchy of caretakers with increasing social responsibility. When the order functioned in harmony, our civilization would flourish. That is, that sure is a neat sounding science fiction utopia. Wait, die, I mean science reality. But then it all went to shit because of that meddlesome demon? Yes, the demon you say I'm supposed to defeat. Yes, hang on. Would that be the same demon I'm named after? Who told you that? Um, I guess technically my own brain did? That's interesting, I wasn't planning on mentioning that, or at least not just yet. Why? There's no reason to prematurely overcomplicate an already complicated tale. All facts will fall into place in due time. Yeah, but it's true, right? More or less. Can you tell me anything more about this demon? All I know is he might be a skull monster. Wait, he is a skull monster, right? He most certainly is a, he, he most certainly is a skull monster. A very big and angry skull monster. Yes! Okay, but I feel like I should know more about him if I'm supposed to kill him. I didn't say you were supposed to kill him. He cannot be killed. Long ago, he discovered the secret to indestructibility. Oh. Defeating a foe doesn't always involve killing. He has had many incarnations in many universes. If you continue your journey long enough, or f journey for long enough, you may encounter one of them. And if you become strong enough by then, you may be able to defeat him in combat. And if that comes to pass, it would be the first defeat he has ever known. You would be providing the first glimmer of hope to others some that someday he could be destroyed. So you're saying I could do all this, or that I will? For now, I'm saying that we should get going soon, if you would like to meet the others before you wake up. Who? Is there anything else you wanted, you wanted to show me before we go? I didn't mean to get a sidetrack like that. Um, nah, just some more boring junk. There are these fanciful branches, but I don't know where they came from. I suspect some dream sorcery. Oh, they're from somebody, someone else's dream. Are they from a wizard's memory? Ha! <laughs> no. Oh, well, I guess I could show you around outside. There's a jungle out there full of tremendous beasts. N not anymore. Son of a bitch! More fancy branches! This way! What is this realm of limitless wonder? Realm of limitless wonder? God damn it, Jake. Shh! It was my planet! It's great! Everything is so amazing! Who would who would have thunk you have such a crackerjack adventures and dreams that are basically real instead of imaginary? Yup! Or for that matter, that you can meet such neat people along the way. Your thoughts are wandering again, man. Shh! Well, yeah, that, that girl's mushy thought right there. Are you even paying attention? No, shh. We've already been through this, you hopeless rube. You might as well be saying it out loud to her. So why don't you? Maybe I will, wise guy. I mean, she is pretty hot. Yeah, I know now, shush! Jake, it wouldn't work between us. Huh? I'm dead. Yes, right. Perhaps if you died too, although maybe not not after too long? I don't know how I'd feel about that if you were a lot older than me. Man, what the fuck? Although technically I'm already so much older than you, it would just be kind of strange if you were physically my senior by any significant margin, you know? This is a weird fucking train of thought. Can you tell her that? No! I'm going to make you have a seizure and get get you to mime the message you were with your spastic gyrations. Pelvic thrust will be my exclamation points. Screw you, you heard her. I totally have a shot. Huh? What? <clears throat> uh, go on. But I wouldn't want that to happen. What to happen? For you to die soon. I want you to succeed at your quest and to live a long and happy life. Man, I'm going to come out and say it. This broad is a total snore. Yeah, right, bro. Did you hear that? At least if I like, kick the bucket early, there will be, there will be a, shall I say, silver lining? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. It will take the form of some spooky smooches from a smoking ghostly troll babe, so shut your jealous trap. Wait. Oh, dear. How, uh, how loud was I talking just then? You were pretty much yelling. Wink. Ah! If I were real, I would be giving you a standing ovation right now. Five, five, five out of five hats. God, okay, just pretend to forget that, maybe? Not a chance. Not you, her. Her who? Me? Ugh. Why don't you just tell me where we're going? How long is this? Holy shit. Well, it is Aranea talking. I've got a small group of travelers for a meeting. They're briefly passing through this bubble. I was hoping we could introduce ourselves to one another and help orient an old friend of mine to the afterlife. Okay, who is your friend? Another troll? She was supposed to be the empress of all trolls, actually. Wow, so she died before she could be the empress, I guess? Not exactly, since she probably never would have been regardless. She didn't want the job. Why not? Remember how I said each class had a duty to take care of the younger and more populous classes lower on the order? Well, hers was the highest of all. 
She was the only one on the planet with such royal blood aside from the sitting empress? As the heiress, she was meant for a position of incredible responsibility. Once she claimed the throne, she would have to serve for many thousands of years until the next successor was ready. It's a hell of a long time. I guess she wasn't into that. She had some problems with authority. She despised the whole social order, really. I fully tr foolishly tried to convince her to honor her obligation, but she wouldn't listen. She viewed the Empress as a glorified slave, so she abdicated and fled to the moon to hide. I was the only one who knew of her plans. The rest of the world searched for, but never found her. At the time, I was furious with her, but I didn't turn her in. Which, in retrospect, was a key decision that led us here. You mean it led to you being dead? Yes, eventually. While she was there, she discovered an ancient device. Inside the device was a game. She became obsessed with playing it, but needed our friends to agree to play first. She was not well liked by the others, though. Old grudges and rivalries made it hard to convince them. But she's very devious and knows how to trick people into doing what she wants. She even got me to agree by promising she'd return to her place as the heiress when we finished playing. Needless to say, we had no idea what we were getting ourselves into. Sounds like a handful. Yeah, she's not all that bad, though. Well, when you really get to know her. And she's unarmed, which is... Pr and when she's unarmed, which is pretty much never now that I think about it. Okay, she probably is all that bad. The point is, you have to know how to handle her. Regal types can be very touchy, even ones who seem to revel in anarchy. But if you know all the right things to say and do, she will happily hand over the keys to the kingdom, so to speak. After all, royalty is royalty, so... Just let me do the talking for a while, okay? Did you hear that, Jake? Aranea wants to do the talking. I think your dead girlfriend might be starting to come out of her shell. <laughs> okay, that was kind of funny. Archagent report. The Archagent cannot submit the paperwork for his daily report because the Archagent is in jail. He was a bit sloppy and got himself pinched by the white shells. That leaves all his duties to the penult penultimagent, otherwise known as the Draconian Dignitary. We should bear in mind that penultimagent isn't an officially recognized title, though. It's just a word he thinks sounds kind of cool. Report. The report is that you've got all these reports to fill out which the Archagent has been letting pile up, and which you have absolutely no intention of completing. Paperwork's even less your bag than it is his. As was mentioned, the boss is still stuck in the big house. You got the droll working on busting him out, but you've said no per but you've said no particular hurry on that. You like to keep a casual administrative style. The boss is always in a hurry, all wound up like a knife wielding top. Personally, you don't see the harm in playing it cool. Mounting paperwork aside, there's still a matter of this little insurrection to deal with. The boy is still out there, piking heads, agitating subjects, getting everyone all hot and bothered. The press is going berserk with it, and you you can only have so many reporters killed on any given news cycle. Can't forget about the girl, either. She's still out there, going rogue. Wait, you mean AWOL. A stinking pun gets you every time. Puns are even less dignified than paperwork. Locate Prince. You can't. By now, the kid is up to his goddamn neck in convoluted gothic architecture. He's burrowed, he's burrowed fuck deep in flying buttresses and purple pointy things. He even stopped by the boss's cubicle of vigilance and sliced up his fenestrated walls to make searching for him harder. Cunning bastard. There used to be a fourth one, but you don't know what happened to it. There was a rumor circulating that sold some old woman made off with it a long time ago before the new queen took over. Whatever happened, it's nothing to worry about now. If you want to smoke this kid out of hiding, you'll need some help. Seek help. You already did. You walked to retrieve it in no particular hurry. Earlier, you quite calmly and diplomatically explained everything to the old lady, letting her know you could use a little extra firepower to get the situation under control. You were pretty smooth about it, offering to light her cigarette during a calculated pause. She doesn't even smoke. You're just that good. While you were making your smooth pitch, you did a masterful job of giving her the impression that you didn't care much one way or the other. But to be fair, you really don't care much one way or the other. Retrieve extra firepower. In response, the dame gave you the clearance to employ the service of Drone Gorg, the flagship battle mech of the Imperial fleet she keeps stationed on some other damn planet. You're not sure where it is or what it's called? Hell if it's any of your business. Mount Drone Gorg and ride into battle. No. You'd feel completely ridiculous piloting that thing. It's a bad look for you. No style at all. Only an other fool would get a kick out of prancing around in that asinine getup. It's a, it was a classy gesture by the queen, but you told her you'd have to pass. But it doesn't do... It doesn't do no good to spurn generosity from a beautiful and deadly woman. You thanked her for the kind offer and tact tactfully brought up an alternative. See, you told the boss this is his problem. He's too... This is his problem. He's too blunt about his ambitions. Don't get you wrong. 
It's all well and good for a man to keep his eyes on the prize, but he doesn't always need to step over a thousand corpses and swim across rivers of blood to get there. You remind him there are slicker ways to get to make your moves, especially when it comes to a lady. Now that you think about it, Slick would be a good ironic nickname for him. Might be good for a laugh calling him that, or it would be if you actually ever laugh. The point is, you know how to handle her. Regal types can be very touchy, even the ones who seem to revel in anarchy. But if you know all the right things to say and do, she will happily hand over the keys to the kingdom, so to speak. After all, royalty is royalty. Did you just stop the record with the cigarette that she doesn't smoke? It's great. You're not feeling it. That was a little- that that little number was way too big for its britches. You could tell it was just gonna blast off, and next thing you know, everyone's on their feet cutting a rug, making complete fools of themselves. This ain't no sock hop. Why does everything have to be so flashy and frenetic? What's the big hurry, anyway? Sure, you're gonna put this little ring on, but when you're good and goddamn ready, Maybe do a little reading first, have another smoke, finish your coffee, listen to some real music. Everybody needs to calm the fuck down. Ascend more casually. I hate a moral coward, one who lacks a manly spark. I just detest a man afraid to go home in the dark. I always spend my evening where there's women, wine, and song. But like a man, I always bring my little wife along. I'm a member of the Midnight Crew. I'm a night owl and a wise bird too. Home with the milk in the morning, singing the same old, same old song. Rise with the moon, go to bed with the sun. Early to bed and you'll miss all the fun. Bring your wife in trouble, it will never trouble you. Make her a member of the Midnight Crew. Wah, 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 wah. The fun doesn't stop till twelve on happy old Broadway. So what's the use of going home until the break of day? Now something confidential, whisper not above a breath. I once went home at two a.m. and scared my wife to death. I'm a member of the Midnight Crew. I'm a night owl and a wise bird too. Home with the milk in the morning, singing the same old, same old song. Rise with the moon, go to bed with the sun. Early to bed and you'll miss all the fun. Bring your wife in trouble, it will never trouble you. Make her a member of the Midnight Crew. Wah, 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 wah. I never shall forget the night I made six rappers run. Although I didn't have a knife, a blackjack, or a gun. I proved myself a hero of a very high degree. I ran for home and six of them were running after me. I'm a member of the Midnight Crew. I'm a night owl and a wise bird too. Home with the milk in the morning, singing the same old, same old song. Rise with the moon, go to bed with the sun. Early to bed and you'll miss all the fun. Bring your wife and trouble, it will never trouble you. Make her a member of the Midnight Crew. Make her a member of the Midnight Crew. After a lot of bullshitting around, you calmly and casually put on the Ring of Orbs No Fold. A phenomenal transformation takes place. You become. My God. You become.
The Draconian Dignitary. Really, you don't know why everyone's always got to be transforming from things into other things. Taking on these wild appearance modifications just for a little boost in power always struck you as tacky. Where's the class? It's just, it takes no creativity or guile for these villain types to grab a little power through such outlandish transformations. No imagination at all. You were utterly astounded by how shitty their imagination is. If their imagination was a face, you would shoot it. In the face. Unleash awesome powers of ring. Awesome powers, let's see. You're guessing it could probably make you invisible. Yeah, there you go, invisible. Just like you thought. What else is magic, a magical ring of void going to do? This is like Magic Rings 101, real basic stuff. Okay, that's cool, stop being invisible. You stop being invisible. There's not a lot of style to invisibility, primarily because no one gets to see how damn smooth you're being. It's kind of a pointless power anyway. Some real dime store parlor trickery, trickery that's just a waste of everyone's time. You doubt you'll ever use it again? It's sure not going to help you track down that elusive kid. But sooner or later, he's going to find out it's much harder to outrun the ring's true power. Use the red miles. The kid can't escape the miles. No one can escape the miles. Okay, so, while no one is able to escape the miles, in the next episode, Jane is going to keep looking for a dad. So, this has been Anachi Sasuke. This was episode 92 of Let's Read Homestuck. I wonder what will happen in episode 100. I don't fucking know. We'll find out. So, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Later.